Welcome in. New studio, new software I'm trying to run here. So let's roll with it today. What's up, guys? Welcome in. Let me move this off to the side so I can actually have some comments today. So if you haven't already, please go smash the like or go in here. I'm going to put this in the chat. I know this is for the people in the EM chat. So I just put that in there. Go and do this here. I'm going to spam you real quick. There you go. Click that. Smash a like. Smash the subscribe. Smash whatever you want to smash. And we'll go from there. Okay. So here's what was interesting to me this morning. Look at this. Look at this. These futures right here. I woke up at about 1 o'clock in the morning. It felt like it was like, geez, it felt like it was six in the morning. I was so damn tired. But guys, go over and go over to the other channel. Hit that hit that link I just put in there. Head over to the other channel, EM Live, subscribe. That's where the morning show is going to be from here on out. That's where any live stream is going to be on EM from here on out. So anyways, the NASDAQ futures were all the way up, as some rapper says. The Dow futures were plus they were over a percentage point up and the S&P was up over a percent because everyone was super excited about um, the war talks that were happening. And then the Chinese came out and here we are this morning opening up a little bit down. But let's go over here. Why this is the most important week for the stock market. OK, the Federal Reserve meets this week. So what we've been waiting on is what? The interest rate talk. Everybody's been talking about interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. Inflation is dope. Um, by the way, for those of you that need gas, shoot me a shoot me a DM on Instagram. I am selling dime bags full of gasoline. I have unleaded. I have 87. I have 89. I have 93. I also have diesel fuel for the truckers out there. I have diesel fuel for you. So dime bags of um, gasoline to. I'm doing my part to curb inflation. So. Uh, that is that. So the Federal Reserve is going to meet this week. It's expected that they're going to do a 25-point basis hike right now. Um, and I have CNBC. I, in my new studio, I have a television right there. So I have, I have CNBC on that I'm watching. 
and Jim Cramer's up there. It says stocks down six of the last seven days. Crude slides five and a half percent. I love I, I love the new setup. It's gonna be sweet because over there, well, I'll tell you about it later. But um, he is an uh, Jerome Powell. He's said to be an anti-inflation anti-inflation man, and he's gonna put the hammer down uh, as far as interest rates go. Okay, sounds good. This person from managing director from uh, Jefferies. We suspect the Fed officials will be reluctant to seriously consider 50 point basis point hikes until downside risks to the global economy from the war diminish. But we do not expect, it's funny. They always say that, well, they've been saying that the war isn't the reason that the stocks are, the stocks are falling and we have fluctuation and now, now, now it is, okay. Or, or, or that we have, that we have uh, inflation. But we do not expect the war to knock the Fed off of its 25 point basis pipe basis point hike per meeting tightening path so that's that <laughs> that one guy just said oh my god you have 87 oh i got all the 87 you need i got all the 87 dime bags you need um we believe that like the original volcker break inflation tightening in 1979 stocks will be resilient growth will be slower but remain positive and the commodity surge absent nuclear escalization will may have peaked and I do, the, these, these commodity surges that have happened over the last, oh, I don't know, how many, how many days? I mean, this is getting, a, these, especially copper and stuff. I mean, come on. There's certainly no reason to panic yet, but in light of the latest evidence, the Fed needs to remain very village, vigilant. Thank you for that. Anything else here? I don't think I highlighted anything else in this article. Let's X out. Next, 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 next. Um, this was interesting. Please tell me if you're in this category and let me, you know what, let me pull up, hold on a second. Let me put this here, I'm trying to learn this new software, this here, this here. I need both of your comments. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, hold on. So, <laughs> this person just said, Kramer is stupid, stick to Seinfeld. So here's the problem I have with Seinfeld. I think I actually do think that the humor is pretty funny but it's not Seinfeld exclusive. I can't watch shows with a laugh track in the background. It just drives me nuts and I can't focus on anything else except for that laugh track. And frankly, I find it insulting that they have to tell me when to laugh. First time home buyers skip starter homes and go straight for bigger homes. Please tell me if you're in this boat because I'm very interesting to see that. Oh guys, here, let me, uh, let me slap a link in here again. Guys, click this link that I'm just spamming you with right now and go click it, go over, smash the like button, watch it, watch the live stream every morning over on Everything Money Live. So they want their dream house, but they're bypassing the fixer upper homes, which is not surprising. My generation doesn't really like doing work on houses. We want a house that is move-in ready condition, says the 43-year-old investor. Good pipes, good electrical, good bones, all brand new. More millennials are skipping starter homes and go going for turnkey stuff. Millennials are the fastest growing. Th this is funny because this kind of switched in the last five years because millennials weren't buying homes. Millennials, which are the fastest growing segment of home buyers, ac accounting for 37% of all homes in the housing market, don't want to take renovation projects or deal with contractors. I don't blame them for dealing with contractors. This person, sk Shank, Skank, I don't know what it is, wanted to buy, wanted a home that would both suit their current lifestyle and meet their future needs as uh, they plan to stay for 10 years, which is well beyond the typical three to seven years that the previous generation wanted to stay. So let me know if, I'm very interested to see, what do you guys think? I, I mean, I bought in two homes and I've gone in and renovated both of them. I like renovation because I get what I want. I mean, I, it's rare that I walk into a home and I go, yeah, this is turnkey. Let's just, let's just move in. Young adults are able to leapfrog from normal home buying patterns. Listen to this. Combination of low interest rates, low payments, and hordes of cash. They are just flushed with cash from this, uh, from this sitting, at the, sitting and living at their parents' house during the pandemic. It's, it's incredible. I'm still in my first house for 30 years now. My dad um, is in his first house. He paid 26000 for back in the day. That's incredible. That's incredible. Housing bubble again, here we go. So the difference is there's no, there's not really fraud in this housing market. So that's the difference. Okay, next. What is this? I don't even remember reading this article. Oh, the Chinese thing. So look at this, guys. Chinese stocks had their, had their worst day since the global financial crisis in 2008. It wasn't even COVID. It was, 
<laughs> down 7.2% on Monday, wiping out 2.1 trillion. Yikes. The broad route follows a report citing U.S. officials that uh, Russia has asked China for military assistance. So that caused some rifts over there. Then it comes as regulatory worries, the 10 cent thing. We're going to talk about 10 cent in a few. I think that's all I highlighted in this article. So China is um, getting hit a little bit hard. Look at this. So this was a big stock that a lot of people were talking about. Incredible. This is incredible. Tencent dives on report of record fine for money laundering. So here's what I'll tell you. Oh, yes. Who just said that? Tom, Tom Poe, did the time go back? Yeah, we, we, moved, we moved time here in the United States for whatever ungodly reason that we still do that. Um, Tencent dives on report. So this gives me more confidence in Alibaba, frankly. If they were going to go and bust a bunch of these companies, they would do it all at the same time. So Tencent Holdings extended the losses more than 10% after the Wall Street Journal reported it faces a record fine for violating Chinese anti-money laundering regulations. The People's Bank of China found Tencent's WeChat Pay had allowed the transfer of funds for illicit purposes such as gambling. Oh, like Bitcoin? WeChat Pay has also judged non-compliant with other rules that require Tencent to identify users and merchants uh, transacting on the platform. A probe into the potential money laundering would open a new front for Beijing's uh, sweeping crackdown on the internet industry. Tencent it's, itself thus far has mostly escaped formal regulatory action, unlike rivals like Alibaba. Yeah, so regulatory action. There's a reason that they haven't. Companies like Alibaba and this one, I don't know how you say that, but I know they've been around forever. They've been around for so long and they, they've been around for five plus years on the, on the Chinese market. So it's time for Tencent to pay the piper. It is what it is. All right, next. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, Naspers. Naspers, which is uh, invested in Tencent for more than 20 years, remains the biggest holder, plunged 15% in Johannesburg, most since 2000. The stock is down 38% this year. So I think, that, I think that's the stock Monish Pabrai bought. Uh, Walt Disney bought. So Bob Iger's back, back at it. He is back, baby, and he's in the metaverse. In his first move in his career since um, leaving the entertainment company in November, Bob Iger has taken a board seat with Los Angeles-based Genies, Inc. They are in the metaverse. They are in the metaverse. And this is going to be epic. Guys, if you have not yet, if you're watching on Everything Money right now, click this link that I just put in there uh, multiple times and head over to watch on Everything Money Live. And that is where the new chat is going to, I mean, that's where the new live stream is going to be every morning. Any live stream that we do through Everything Money is going to be over there. So here's the deal. Genie operates an NFT market, also operates an NFT marketplace where it could sell uh, creations for 5% or something. This person from um, that company, we deliver a variety of different tools, tools that allow people to create different types of avatar species, to create different avatar fashions, to be able to create different avatar worlds, and then also avatar interactive experiences. I don't know, want, want to know what those are. Mr. Iger said he was attracted to genies because he believes that the ability for anyone to easily create and sell virtual goods will change the entertainment industry and be a key component of the metaverse. Imagine, you know, letting someone buy a Mickey Mouse avatar and customizing it in a way that would not be, uh, that would not only, we would never allow it before, but hard to do in the physical world. I still don't get it. It's a digital picture. I just doesn't, none of this just makes sense to me. I just don't understand the whole proprietary value of nfts like i don't like if i take a picture of this this is my coaster that says do not doubt me because you shouldn't i don't understand how that picture is going to be worth any money I, I don't get it if somebody can just explain that to me either i'm really that stupid or I don't know what the other alternative is. Electric bills are soaring. I just, let's just look at these, some of these numbers. My, my number's insane. A, a, as a result, some customers are seeing 20%. Look at this poor guy from New York. New, well, he shouldn't live in New York in the first place. He was paying $500 a month 
for gas and electric, and now he's paying just not, just shy of a thousand. Um, it's increased 23% in a lot of regions of New York. Average retail energy prices uh, has rose 4.3%. It's this is all transitory though, so don't worry. This is the largest increase since 2008. There's nothing to worry about here. Don't worry. This person says, "I'm glad I have don't have an electric car." Well. I actually do think that having an electric car is maybe a little bit better as far as the gas goes, but what do I know? Um, by the way, if you have, if you just tuned into the show, I'm selling dime bags full of gasoline, 87, 89, 91, 93 diesel fuel, corn fuel. I, I have, I, I'm also in the process of getting bags of hydrogen shipped over to me from Taiwan. Um, but uh, shipping issues are we're running into shipping issues. So Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, says that he's going to come back and play a 23rd season. And who wouldn't want to talk about this? His, his, the, the reason I wanted to talk about this, his retirement lasted 40 days. He said he's coming back. Listen to this. So those of you who don't know, I guess he threw his last pass that he threw in the NFL. That football sold on Saturday night at an auction for $518,000. $518,000. Turn to yesterday, last night, he tweets out that he's coming back. He has unfinished business. That football is probably worth like maybe 500 bucks now. It's worth whatever an average Tom Brady football is worth. All right, let's see what we got here. Futures are, oh, they're going back up. That's cool. That cool. All right, 12, it's with the 10 year, two, 10 years over. Oh, we're soaring, baby, because everybody's expecting that they're going to start moving interest rates a little bit higher. Do we have any inversions coming close? Two and five. Eh, eh. 10 and 30, meh. Earnings season's basically over. We don't need to talk about that for a little bit. Uh, let, let's see, watch later. Okay, here you go. This is everything you get if you come on over to everythingmoney.com or Patreon, eight, eight Pillars Retirement Calculator, Stock Analyzer Tool, Eight Pillars Portfolio, exclusive content, watch list is now available. Plus you get the chat right here, right here, baby. Click the chat. You get access to tons and tons and tons of people. 30 bucks a month gets you all of that. If you want to join the Bid and Ask Nation, learn to trade with me, which we're going to do in a few seconds here. You guys, you need to learn to short. I'm telling you, you need to learn to short. And um, click it. Come over. Employed Trader Series, Trading 101 Series, Saturday Seminars, which I just did this past Saturday. Guys, I had Nicole's birthday party for 50 plus people. I don't, I maybe it was 60. I don't know. Um, People were doing stuff in my house. I moved my studio over here. I did all of this on Saturday. But the first thing that I did on Saturday, actually, you know what? The first thing I did was go to Home Depot and Walmart because I had to get stuff for the party. Then I came home and did a one-hour live stream on a Saturday morning with people in the Bid and Ask Nation. If you don't call that dedication, I don't know what to tell you. So come on over. I'm here for you. And that's that. Okay. Give me some stocks. We'll run through them. Um... No, there's going to be no day trading today because Sethla has to go to Florida tomorrow for a um, for work, and we have to record today. So we'll do day trading tomorrow. It can't be today because we're going to be recording at 10 a.m. So, all right, let's see what we got here. And guys, before I get going again, before I get going again, let me put the link in here. This is for those that are watching on Everything Money. Click the link that I just posted in the chat multiple times. I'm spamming you. I'm spamming you. How do you like it? Please don't spam me. And um, you will be able to, we're going to move exclusively over to the Everything Money live chat. So or, uh, Everything Money live channel for all lives. So uh, BBY. Whoops. BBY. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Bed Bath & Beyond. Nope, that's wrong. BBBY is Bed Bath & Beyond. This is Best Buy. So you are really holding real tight right here. You know what? Hold on. Let me let me change the screen. Guys, tell me what screen you like more. Let me put this here. Tell me what screen you like more. Do you want do you want no? Do you want this screen or do you want this screen? Cuz I don't want to block that stochastic in the bottom corner. So we'll go here right now. You guys let me know what you want and we'll do it. I hope you can see it. Okay. Next. Um BBY. So it's just sitting here at this at this consolidation point. Um I think that eventually if this looks like it's going to bounce here and just start moving back up. And it's been basically moving between 125 and 95 for the better part of, I don't know, two years. So we'll see. Let's see here. Let's zoom into this one. Ah, so if you want to short this, I do believe you can get a nice short down to like 86 bucks. Great engulfing candlesticks. 
coming in. See if you can, the other screen, please. You got it. So um, I'm going to go to the other screen real quick. Hold on. I agree with you. So here's the problem with the other screen. So the problem with this screen is I'm, you're going to get, I might block that stochastic in the bottom, this bottom corner over my face. So I apologize if you can't see it. I just, I, I, this is what Restream does and it is what it is. So if you get engulfing candlesticks coming down here, you can absolutely go for it. Friday was a beautiful ad. I would have had no problem with that, even though it was a Friday. Um, but look to get some more volume coming in there. That would be a good one. Okay, next. Let's see what we got. What else do we have? Apple. Apple I'm not going to do because it's part of the Employed Trader Series. If you want that one, I update my trades on Apple every single day. It's one of, so the Employed Trader Series, for those of you who don't know, it's six stocks that I trade exclusively every single day. And I move on them. And I update you on what my, perform, my, my uh, decision is on the stock each day. So Nike, same thing as Best Buy. Kind of sitting at this bottom, looking to turn up. It's at 120 bucks. It's completely fallen down. It's completely filled this gap that that needed to fill, that was going to fill, and it's done so. So right now over here, though, I would wait. See if you can get this into a long-term trend. Run it up to the 25 or the 50-day moving average, and you'll have something there. Baba is killing me. I don't understand why Baba is ever so worried about Alibaba. It, it just, I mean, maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's, if it comes out that it's fraud, yeah, that sucks. But I, I don't know. I mean, just because just because this happened and just because the stock price can fall to this level that I've been talking about, $58, doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means that it is what it is. Just because, listen, we say it all the time. The stock market is a voting machine in the short term and a weighing machine in the long term. And people are voting against it right now. It is what it is. Yeah, it sucks to lose money, but if nothing has changed in the company, then what are you worried about? All right, Starbucks. Hmm, Starbucks is very susceptible to everything. Look at COVID. They had one of the biggest drops I've ever seen in COVID um, of any of these big companies. So if Starbucks falls, now granted, Starbucks is more affected than, say, a tech company because... They, ha they rely on people going in their stores, but uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So what would I do? You can't see my stochastic here, but I would wait for this red line to get up here into the sweet spot if you can. That's the only thing I would, that's the only thing I would wait on. Long term though, chill out here. See if you can get up into the sweet spot. To be honest with you, I wouldn't even be trading this right now. It just, it needs to choose a direction of which way to go. Baba has at least 1.4 billion people using it. It's not going to zero. I do agree with you. Uh, Square, sure. Wow, this is this is one of the this is one of the companies that really perplexed me um, that it ran up this high and it was at nearly $300 a share just in the end of the summer. <clears throat> and now, sheesh, it's insane. Okay, um, let's see here. What do we have here? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, good. So this has more room to fall. Once it takes out this low right here, this wick on what date was this? Once it takes out this wick on 24th of February, this will go. This thing will go once it takes out that wick and it will come down to these COVID levels of 40 bucks. I promise you that this stock being at $300 a share was absurd. Doesn't make any sense at all. So all right. I accidentally repeated Apple. Would the, would the, would the USO index follow basic trends or no, that should follow, um, that should follow, um, futures of oil, futures of oil for USO Twitter, 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 Twitter. Okay. Wow. This actually hasn't fallen. Interesting. No, that's trade web. That's why it's TWTR, right? That's why. There we go. I was going to say this hasn't fallen like everybody else. Okay, sure. 80 bucks just in just a year ago. Just a year ago it was 80 bucks and today it is 30 it's going to open at 30 $33 if it more uh never mind. If you drop below the same thing, drop below that probably February date, this thing is coming back down to covid levels if not below, if not below. All of these companies 
are going to be coming below COVID levels. I'm telling you right now, they should have kept going during COVID instead of going back up. But that's what happens when you put $13 trillion into the stock market. Elon tweeted some controversial stuff. Wonder if Tesla falls more. Why don't we take a gander? Uh, there was a funny article that I saw that came out today. It said Tesla will be impacted by um, um, so, uh, inflation. Oh, cool. I really needed an article for somebody to tell me that one because I didn't. I just thought that Tesla, Tesla was certainly 100% uh, immune from inflation. Thank God that there's people to write articles that can tell me those kind of brilliant things. So here's the interesting thing about Tesla. It's just hovering right on that 200-day moving average. It won't leave it. It is glued to that thing, just completely glued to it. So it's going to open today a little bit lower, <clears throat> a little bit lower, but let's see what happens tomorrow. Let's see what happens actually throughout the day. This thing can definitely be pulled right back to that 200-day moving average. Now, if you drop below this wick on, was that January 24th? Was that what it was? Oh, February 24th. If you drop below that wick of February 24th right there, this thing is going to fall and it's going to come down to the 675, 650 level whatever that is. So, uh, yep, that's it. Okay. Should we, should we hold gold or cash right now? Gold, should we hold gold and cash for now? No, I, I still think that you should stick to your plan. You know, I had somebody at Nicole's party. She was, um, she's, she does very well. She came up to me and she's like, Mo, I have $3,000 extra in disposable income every month that I need to do something with. And I just said, listen, just put it into max out your Roth, which she was already doing. So that's good. I was my, my thing that I said, just go into ETFs and I drew it on a napkin at the bar. And I was like, just, you're going to invest sometimes when it sucks. You're going to invest sometimes when it doesn't, but you're going to be very happy when you are 62, 72 years old. So we'll be uh, setting her up with some kind of account like that in the future. Okay. Disney guys, if you're watching on the everything money channel, I'm posting this in the, in the chat, please go over and click that link that I just posted. They're all the same. I'm just spamming you. You will, it'll take you over to everything money live, click some, click subscribe. And that is where you are going to watch the live streams of anything on everything money from now on Disney, same situation as the rest. It's going to, this is going to fall to these COVID levels. The fact that this thing was, was up here was the most absurd thing that I've ever heard. This is a company where coronavirus happened. They literally shut down their parks and shut down 40 to 45% of their operating revenue. And the stock price went berserk. They opened the parks up here all the way around the world and the stock price comes back down. This is one of the most absurd things I've ever seen. Um, this thing will drop below COVID levels because it is worth uh, 85 or so dollars. And it's definitely going to drop below that $85 level. Um, I don't have a Roth IRA. Any suggestions? Get one. That's my suggestion. Donkey Kong DKNG. It's actually DraftKings, but I'm just playing. Okay. This is going to keep falling. Uh, let's look at it. Let's zoom it. Let's really zoom in on this. So you saw where the resistance point was. This is going to keep falling. This is, if you get another engulfing candlestick like Friday, actually, I would have been fine adding on Friday. You had a good engulfment on Friday. You had good volume on Friday. Your trend was down. Plus, you had a big engulfment. On, this is a perfect. This is just perfect. It's a great dog stock. Just keep adding to the short. Now, here's the thing. Let's zoom out here. If you drop below nine bucks, 10 bucks, whatever this area is right in here, I don't know what's going to happen down there because there's no, there's no support. There's no resistance, et cetera. Um, Kathy is crying now. Why? ARKK. That should be up today. It should open. Oh, how is this? How is this? The market is up. The market is up right now. Is it not still? Where's the NASDAQ? Oh, oh wow. Look at that guys. God, I was going to say if the NASDAQ is up, she should be up today, but she's going to open a little bit down. This is going to drop to these levels. Just like I said with Disney, just like I drew that chart, just like we saw with Square, just like we see with Spotify, just like we see with Shopify, all of these companies that came up to these stupid levels for absolutely no reason, other than people were just hyped, like Zoom, they're going to come right back down. And her ETF was made of this nonsense. And you're seeing the ramifications right now. So that is what it is. Um, would you own T? Well, I do own T. Um, but 
caveat, I've owned tea for a very long time. Excuse me. Ugh. I think all those dime bags of, of gasoline are getting to my head and I'm starting to yawn. There you go, guys. I'm going to put that in there. All right. So I've owned tea for a long time. Here's my deal with tea from a value perspective. I'm going to sit and I'm just going to wait until the merger with discovery and or whatever the hell is going on is over and then i'll and then i'll reevaluate at that point i want to see what's going to happen so okay with t though right now it's a downtrend if you get if you want to take if you want to buy into this short after it takes out this low you can i don't think you're going to have a lot of room to run to be honest with you no i wouldn't trade t that was your question and that's my answer intel is this the same exact chart? Because <laughs> because everything can just everything can remain the same. Um, yeah, if you want to try to short this on a daily chart down to this forty two dollar area, you certainly can. But yeah, I I probably wouldn't even start. I you know guys, I'm not a big fan of trading Intel, and you guys know that. They listen to me um, more often than not. So, all right, guys, let's see here. Uh, okay, entry point for Baidu. Okay, I'll do that after charge point. I love doing these companies. <laughs> charge point, I, I like I see why everybody's liking it because it's starting to get this trend. But remember, you need to be in the sweet spot for this thing to continue. It's not gonna go above <clears throat> this $20 level. Actually, it's probably not gonna go above this 100 day moving average. So volume's falling off. Yeah, guys, I am not uh I'm not I'm not too big on this one. Stock market opens and Couple of, couple of seconds, twenty some seconds. Let's do what was the next one I was gonna do? What was I gonna do? Shoot, I don't remember. Hold on a second. Uh, UPST was it? Upstart. UPST. Upstart Holdings. Same situation. Here's your low, January twenty fourth. This is almost the same situation as T and Intel. If you drop below this level, you can short it. You're already pretty low over here. You, just be careful, guys. This is gonna this can this can switch on you on a dime. Did the clocks go forward in the U.S.? Yeah, they did. Whatever that means. These people are outside their minds. We fight about everything everything in the whole freaking world, and we are still the idiots that change a clock. Who changes a clock? Um, what software am I using? No, I'm not using Bloomberg. Uh, we have a Bloomberg, but we have this is um. Trading view. Okay, guys, I'll do one more stock and that's it. Then I'm going to get out of here. When is Google and Amazon? So Google, I think Google splits in June, something like that. Just Google it. <laughs> Google, when does Google split? When does Amazon split? You'll have your answers. It's very simple. Oh, Baidu, Baidu. Blue gang wants to look at Baidu. B-I-D-U, is it? Yikes. So this is a Chinese thing. Listen, this is gonna. This is probably more likely than not gonna drop below eighty-one dollars, and then who knows? It's gonna do <clears throat> the same thing that all the other Chinese companies are doing. Let's see. Let's look at Baidu. Let's look at Baba. Uh, okay, come on. All right, see that gap down to below eighty bucks. Let's do what's the other one? Uh, JD.com. Look at that gap down. So. Also, here's my, th these things have had such a hard gap down. I think they're going to shoot right back up at some point and they'll go from there. I'm going to run for Congress and eliminate daylight saving times. Who has my vote? You got my vote, buddy. You totally got my vote. All right, guys, that's it for today. Same time, same place tomorrow. If you haven't already, go smash the link. Jump over to Everything Money Live. That's where all of the streams are going to be on Everything Money now from if they're live. And what else do I have to say? There was one more thing I wanted to say. Oh, hit the subscribe button over there. Guys, everybody have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Same time, same place.